this is a continuation of my uh, uh, video um, I can't remember the name of it but this is part two and as you can see uh, it's been a while since I've uh, made part one I've actually grown a beard my hair is longer <laughs> and my wife and I have moved so it's been a few months but uh, Anyway, this is a continuation, part two. And uh, you need to watch part one or you probably won't understand what I'm saying here. Anyway, uh, in the beginning of the Bible, it states that in the beginning, God made the heavens and the earth. And that's a broad statement, okay? And then he expounds on, on what he made each day, okay? Now, on the first day, he said, let there be light, okay? And it's there's a lot of people that believe that that's when the sun was made. You know, let there be light. That's not true, okay? You have to read the Bible a little more carefully. You'll find out that the sun was not made till the fourth day. The sun, the moon, and the stars were made on the fourth day, not the first day. So when God said, let there be light on the first day, he obviously was not talking about the sun, the moon, or the stars. Okay? He was talking about something invisible, something spiritual. Okay? He was talking about spiritual light. Now, spiritual light is hard to define into words. It really is. You know, you hear people say, oh, I see the light. I finally saw the light, you know, or you, <laughs> you could tell your, ch your child or you could talk about a person and say, well, that person's not too bright. You know, that's, it's in our, our linguistics and our vocabulary throughout the world to use uh, types of words that refer to light when we're trying to describe things or uh, characteristics about people. You know, I got a son, but he's not too bright. You know, my daughter's not too bright. Okay. Uh, you know, when that person's around somebody, you know, she really shines. You know, whatever, whatever. It's all through our, it's threaded through human language to use the sun or the characteristics of the sun as a way to describe people or characteristics of people. So it is entwined in, in humanity, light, okay? Anyway, spiritual light is truth. When someone says, I see the light, they're saying, I finally see the truth of whatever they've been searching for. I see the light, okay? Um, now, in some of your Eastern philosophies, they, they talk about enlightenment and this and that. You know, somehow they're living in a state of enlightenment. Okay, they're on to something, but of course, that's a pagan religion. And pagan religions are not true. They're false religions. But they do have some characteristics of the religion that... Uh, are very similar or actually copy what's in the Holy Bible. Nevertheless, so you understand spiritual light is truth. It's uh, knowledge, awareness, uh, wisdom. It's hard to put it into words, but it's all those which I just stated and more. Okay, so when God said, let there be light, that was the first thing he did on the first day. You have to realize that God created truth, okay? He created truth. Man did not create truth. Do you understand? The Bible says that God is not a man that he shall lie, okay? Men have the capability of lying, you know, men and women, and they do. Children, all of us can lie. I've lied, you've lied. If uh, you don't think you've lied, you're probably not telling the truth. Nevertheless, God created truth. Now, there's a, if you read in the Bible at the time period when uh, Jesus was being uh, 
just before they crucified him. And he was uh, speaking, I believe, to Pontius Pilate. You'd have to look up in the Bible. And Jesus made the statement to Pontius Pilate that uh, he is the truth. Jesus was proclaiming that he is the truth. And uh, Pontius Pilate's uh, remark to that was, what is truth? It's in the Bible. Okay? Look for yourself. I'm not, uh, if I give you all these scriptures in my video here, this would be a very long video. And I'm trying to promote you to look for yourself because I think it's better that you look for yourself and uh, see it with your own eyes in the Holy Bible, what it says, and not just listen to people, uh, pastors and preachers, and even me, you know. Look for yourself so you see it with your own eyes. It's always better. Anyway, if you read the story, I'll say it again, that he was just about to be crucified. Pontius Pilate was uh, sort of interrogating Jesus. He didn't think Jesus was a guilty man of anything. He, he was the... Uh, he was not a Jew, of course, Pontius Pilate, but he was the uh, Roman Empire. He was the king or whatever he was. And uh, anyway, he was interrogating Jesus. And when Jesus made this statement, I am truth, Pontius Pilate said, what is truth? So the point I'm trying to make is throughout history, since the beginning of time, man a lot of men throughout the world or mankind do, doesn't know what the truth is. They're searching for something that might exist, but that they, they have a hard time finding it. People worship all kinds of things. They worship the animals. They worship the cow. They worship fish. Uh, that's why you see in Christian uh, symbolism, you'll see a fish, you know, on the back of somebody's car or something. That's actually uh, the beginnings of that came from a pagan religion, really. And I'm not saying you should tear the fish off the back of your car, but I'm telling you that fish symbol came from a pagan religion. At one time, man worshipped fish. Usually man uh, worshipped uh, what provided food is what I, uh, it looks like to me. Worship cow because a cow provided milk, it provided beef, butter, cream. You know, it provided more than any other animal. So they worship the cow, you know. Nevertheless, it's in man's uh, being to search for something to worship. And all through history, that they've worshipped some very strange things, you know, animals, fish, cow. They worship the sun. They worship the moon. They worship stars. They worship other people, uh, which is a dangerous, it's all idolatry. When you don't worship the true God, you're worshiping you're, you're committing idolatry. You're placing something on a pedestal and worshiping. And then, like I say, it could be a person. A lot of people idolize sports stars. They idolize uh, uh, celebrities. They idolize uh, scientists. I mean, they idolize people that are on TV <laughs> or whatever. They try to be like them. There's been plenty of people that uh, have gotten plastic surgery to look like Michael Jackson or plastic surgery, and uh, they want to be like Elvis Presley. It's idolatry, and it's really uh, a mental problem. Be that as it may, um, when God said, let there be light, he was saying, let there be truth. Let truth be established. Let there be an awareness, okay? Not just for God, but for mankind, too, you know? Uh, let there be knowledge, let there be wisdom. That's what spiritual light is. So on the first day, he created that. It wasn't until the fourth day when he uh, created the uh, the moon, the stars, and the sun. And uh, I've done some other videos. I'll quickly say that the sun is a symbol of God. It's a symbol of God our Father and also of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Okay. Uh, if you watch my other videos, you'll find out that that's true. And the moon, of course, is a symbol of Satan. A falling star is a fallen angel. Uh, the stars that you see up in heaven represent uh, angels. A falling star represents a fallen angel that's fallen from God's grace. Okay. 
each each angel has a, a star. I'll give you a few quick examples. When Jesus was born, there were three wise men that followed a star, and when they got underneath that star, there was Jesus Christ. They came to worship him. That star was created when Jesus Christ was born, and that star was an angel. It had to be an archangel, a very uh, top top of the line angel. There are different kind of angels. Um, Archangels, lower angels, you know, there's just not one uh, type of angel. That, that uh, the brighter the star, the higher up the angel is because they're really a, a very bright, shining for God. I mean, there, there's different kind of angels. Nevertheless, they went, the wise men followed that star and it led them right to Jesus Christ. Okay, that angel was there to overlook Jesus as an infant. Nevertheless, stars do represent angels. A falling star represents a fallen angel. Uh, the claim that Satan was a fallen angel. When he did what he did in the Garden of Eden, his, his star along with him was cast into the lowest heaven, which is this world. Okay, there are different levels to heaven. This is the lowest heaven. Anyway, what's left of his physical star you know, a meteorite, what's left of it, because, you know, as as you know, when asteroids and meteorites come to this earth, they go through the, the atmosphere and they burn up and they become smaller or they can break up. What's left of his star is in the Kaaba in Saudi Arabia at the Grand Mosque in, in uh, Mecca. Okay, it's attached to the, the Kaaba. It's on the corner of the Kaaba, and they try to, as Muslims walk around on their pilgrimage, or what they call Hajj, they go on a Hajj to go to Mecca, and they walk around circles around the Kaaba. They try to kiss that black star. Now, what kind of religion? Religions can be very strange in their, their, uh, in, in their worshiping. Do you understand? such as Jews go to the Wailing Wall. They go in front of a, what's left of the Holy Temple, the Temple Mount, and uh, that's what's left of uh, the Temple when it got destroyed in 70 AD by the Roman Empire. Okay, that's where God used to live, but it got destroyed and he went back up to heaven, but that's what's left of it. But if you look at it in its purest form, they stand in front of a stone wall and they, they pray, what they call davening. They pray. Now, I've been to that Western Wall. There's a lot of papers stuck in the cracks and crevices, just thousands and thousands of them. And every little crack, I guess they're all prayers. So look at it in its purest form. A person goes to a wall, they stick a prayer in a crack of a stone, okay, and pray to God. That's peculiar, okay? It's a strange thing. It's peculiar, okay? Uh, Muslims go to Mecca. That's the most holy site. You know, they have other sites in Medina. They have the uh, Dome of the Rock on top of the Jews' Temple Mount, which is an ongoing problem. That's one of the Muslims' holy sites on top of the Jews' only site. Nevertheless, uh, the Grand Mosque, um, they walk around in circle. So, so in its purest form, here's a bunch of human beings with white robes on them walking around in circle around this building that has a black cloth over it. Now, and then it has on one corner a what's left of a star. And they walk around that that building with the black cloth around in circles and they try to kiss that what's left of that star. That's a weird, strange, isn't it? Do you understand? Take a look away all the fanfare and look at it and it's naked. Look at it like uh, naked. Like, do you understand what I'm trying to say? Here's human beings walking around circles around this building trying to kiss what's left of a meteorite. That's a very peculiar religion, very strange thing to do, isn't it? You know, I can understand praying to a God that you might believe in, 
but can you understand making a long pilgrimage, taking off time for work, maybe going thousands of miles and taking off a, a month of work or a week to go to this place and, and change your clothing into a white robe and then walk around in circles in, around this building with a black cloth on it and then try to kiss a corner that has what's left of a star? That's very peculiar, very strange, isn't it? Of course it is. But there's oddities in all religions, okay? Mankind is the one that gives value to what they're doing, okay? But if you, if you take away man's value from that and look at it in its naked form, it's very strange to go to another country in Mecca and walk around in circles and try to kiss a corner of a building. That's a strange thing, okay? The Christians do strange things too. You know, they put their children in water. They call it uh, baptism. You know, they put an infant in water and the infant comes out of the water or they do it as an adult. You know, they go in a creek, they go down in the water, they come up. It's a strange, peculiar thing, but it has value to it. They call it a, a being baptized. But if you take away the value, it's a very odd thing to do. To go in a body of water, go down, come up. Most people do that when they take baths every night. I mean, it's very strange, but it is what it is. It has meaning in the Christian faith. They have other things that are oddities. I mean, if you look at, uh, for example, and I'm not, I don't want to pick on any of the denominations, but the, the one that most people would commonly know is Catholicism. They're religious leader, the Pope, he wears very strange clothing and a, and a big, ridiculous looking hat. And all the clergymen wear pink or purple dresses. They look like a female dress, very colorful. And they would, uh, they would, what they, they all wear, including the Pope, they wear what we would call gay clothing, gay, gay apparel. Very colorful, very very uh, floral, very a uh, lot of color in it, and a, like a dress. And I'm not trying to pick on; just seeing seeing it for what it's for what it is without you know, without uh, the value that their followers put on that. If I was to look at the Pope and not realize that he's the religious leader of the the, the Catholic persuasion, I would say that man has a ridiculous looking hat that's really tall. He's wearing a white, a white clothing, and it looks kind of like a dress, and walks around with a, some sort of cane. I would think that that is a ridiculous man. Do you understand what I'm saying? So all religions have oddities and s s some strange, uh, peculiar things to them, and they do, okay? But you, you have to see things for what they're worth, okay? Anyway, getting back to uh, um, God made on the first day, uh, he said, let there be light. You know, he was saying, I'll say it again, let there be truth, let there be knowledge and awareness, uh, wisdom. That's in the invisible light. Okay. So there, if there's invisible light, there certainly would be invisible darkness. And I have to tell you, unless you know Jesus Christ, okay, you're in the dark. Jesus said, I am the light. He said, I am the way, the light, and the truth, okay? And he also said, I am the light of the world. That's what he said, okay? I am the light of the world. He is the only source of light in this world, Jesus Christ. So if he's the only light in this world, all others are uh, either uh, fake or religions that hold you in the dark because Jesus makes a profound statement. I am the, the light of the world. He didn't say I am just one of many lights in the world. He said I am the, the light of the world. That means all other religions are fake. They're phony and they hold you in the dark. They're, man, they're either man, made by man or made by Satan. Those are the only two that they could be made from because the true religion is made from God, right? The one true God made the, the true religion. 
okay, the one true God is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He's the one true God of uh, Judaism and also the one, the same God of Christianity, okay? Christianity and, the Jew, you know, Christians and Jews worship uh, the same God. You know, basically the only difference is the Jews don't believe Jesus Christ is the Messiah. And that's, I'm not going to get into that. That's done on purpose. They were, uh, through their fall, came uh, salvation to the rest of the world, to the Gentiles. And now is the time of the Gentiles. Someday it'll be time of the Jews. And I explain and teach that on other videos. But uh, I want to give you a little more food for thought in believing in God, okay? The, uh, uh, just a few things to, to, uh, uh, shed light on, on uh, what the truth is, okay? There are, uh, it's obvious when you look in this world, there's very strong evidence that it was flooded at one time. That if you looked at the Grand Canyon in the western part of the United States, and I've seen it with my own eyes, of course, as a child, my, my parents, we went on a vacation and then we went to the Grand Canyon and Yellowstone Park and yada, 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 okay? The, if you look at the Grand Canyon, it's very obvious. You don't have to be a very intelligent, phys, you know, physic, uh, you know, a rocket scientist or a, a, somebody who's an expert in physics to understand that that canyon was formed by a lot of water. And it's very deep and it's very wide. So it must have been a lot of water. Okay. They have found... Uh, fish fossils on top of mountains. Now, how do you get a fish on top of a mountain? There had to be a, a, enough water that uh, it, it was, the mountain had to be underwater at one time, and a fish that gave its life for that fossil, that's how it got on top of that mountain. And then, of course, the water is no longer here, is it, on top of the mountain? No. Where'd all the water go? Well, most of the water is salt water in the world, right? All the oceans are salt water. The Dead Sea, okay, over in Israel, is the, the has the largest, uh, highest content of salt. And I've been in the Dead Sea. And I went on a, a pilgrimage years ago to Israel. We, one of the places where we did go was to the Dead Sea, and we put on our swimsuits and went out there. It was a very strange experience. It's like you're a cork. And you could sit Indian style, sort of, and just sit uh, way above the water line. It's very, it was very strange. You're like this, you have a, a lot of buoyancy. But uh, it was very strange. It was very fun. But I'll, I'll tell you one thing. If you ever go there, don't taste it. Okay. The little kid inside of me was very curious about what it tastes. I thought it would just taste very salty. And I took and dipped my finger, took one drop. And it is the most disgusting taste ever. It does not taste like salt. So I recommend if you go there, don't ever taste it. Anyway, the Dead Sea, the largest content of salt in a body of water, okay, and it's the lowest uh, elevation in the world. So it's the lowest point in the world, and it has the highest salt content. Now, you don't have to be somebody, like I said, you don't have to be a scientist to realize it's the lowest point in all the world, and it has the highest salt content. That, as they say, is where God pulled the drain plug, went after the great flood, and it all came, you know, all the water had to drain most of it into that dead sea. because it went wherever it went. Do you understand? Because it makes sense. It's the lowest, lowest point in all the earth, and it has the highest content of salt. So, like, I'll say it again. That's where God pulled the plug after the great flood and uh, Noah and, you know, had the ark after the God had to make the water go away. This is how you get fish fossils on mountains. This is how you get great uh, canyons like the, the Grand Canyon in the United States. It's all formed by the great flood. So there is evidence of a great flood in this world which is evident in the Bible when it talks about God flooded the earth, okay? Do you understand? Anyway, those are things to think about to give great evidence that the Bible's true.
because it is. Anyway, I apologize for this video for being uh, 25 minutes, but uh, and I got off on a few tangents there. One thing I will say is you cannot confine God to explain God and uh, and put him in a box. It, it's uh, God goes on forever. Do you understand? He does. So you can't even if I was to give. Uh, lessons for hours and hours and days and weeks and months, I still can't come to an end of God. There is no God. God is eternal. He has no limit to him like we do. We, we are limited. He is not. He who is unlimited made things that are limited. Anyway, there's a lot of uh, things to think about in this video. I suggest watching over and over, and uh, hopefully it'll, it'll help you along your way of self-discovery of who you are and who God is.